Welcome back to Low Carbon Lifestyle. If I'm honest, it's been a few months since my last video. I'm sorry. Life has started speeding up again, as I'm sure you're aware, as it looked like we were getting into some kind of normality again. And if I'm honest, I haven't had a chance to work on any videos for a good while. Busy work, busy life. You know how it is. But I do have a few videos planned. So maybe, just maybe, we're back on track. Luckily, in the last few months at home, I've been learning lots about the heat pump that we had installed in the summer. And now we're deep into the heating season. I have quite a bit more data I can share on how it's working. So this video is all about the data. How is the heat pump performing? What does it mean for costs? And most importantly, what does it mean for our emissions? Episode 36 of Low Carbon Lifestyle is all about how a heat pump performs in our Victorian terrace. My name is Tom, and this is a little series about a low carbon lifestyle. So let's start with some context. What kind of house is this heat pump heating? Well, this is our house in the middle of our street. We think it was built in around the 1890s because we found a newspaper from that time in a wall when we knocked it down. Amazing. Um, so the front of the house, the walls are really just solid brick, um, but we took quite a lot of refurbishment on the rest of the house when we first moved in. So we installed double glazing. Um, we did an extension in the back of the house to modern building regulations. The attic has roughly 300 millimetres of insulation in it. Um, I'm sat or standing here on a raised vented wood floor, so no insulation in that, which isn't great for heat loss. And actually our hallway can be colder than the North Pole, I'm pretty sure of that, um, because I'm not that convinced our front door was installed very well. So maybe there's some DIY draft proofing on its way um, at some point. But after we did up our house, we had our EPC reassessed. It's now classed as a C with a score of 73, which means our house is possibly slightly better than average in terms of energy use although EPCs probably aren't as accurate as they could be. But the heat loss assessment that, we, that, that was done using the MCS heating analysis, uh, when we got a heat pump, suggested the house needs 5.4 kilowatts of heat at minus two degrees to keep it at 21 degrees inside. So our installers suggested installing a heat pump around that size. Outside, we have a five kilowatt valent aerotherm plus heat pump. And so far, so good. So how is it performing? What about energy, cost, emissions, everything? Our heat pump's been running for more or less five or even six months now. Until the start of October, this was mainly just providing hot water for showers and some washing up and hand washing, all that kind of stuff. But over the last few weeks and months, we've started to rely on some heating. Interestingly, those two things, heating and hot water, mean the heat pump operates at different efficiencies. When our heat pump was installed, we also had a heat meter installed and an electricity meter installed on the connection to the heat pump so that we can keep a track and keep a record of how much heat and electricity it uses. And using that record, we can work out the efficiency or coefficient of performance of the heat pump. I started keeping a record of efficiency in the third week of October. And by that point, for the first four months of operation, it had delivered 700 kilowatt hours of heat using 737, sorry, using 237 kilowatt hours of electricity with an efficiency or coefficient of performance of just under three. Interesting. So what did that mean for costs and emissions for those first four months? Well, the electricity would have cost less than 35 pounds. If we'd have used a gas boiler for that, it would have cost us about 23 pounds. So probably a bit cheaper with a gas boiler. Gas is priced way too low at the moment and electricity is priced way too high. Maybe that needs a different video to explain. But importantly, for those four months, emissions from the heat pump were just under 50 kilograms. A gas boiler would have emitted about 144 kilograms or almost three times more. So after that first four months, I've started taking readings at least weekly. And I'm going to plot the usage, emissions, costs, etc, etc and efficiency for the foreseeable future. And I'll even try to do some mini update videos on here. The last couple of months have given me much more data on how the system responds to heating and hot water, particularly as the temperature begins to drop. It's December now. I'm gonna concentrate on how the efficiency has changed specifically. For the first four months, 
we had a COP or efficiency of three. And as we began to use more heat relatively to hot water, the efficiency started to go up from three to 3.3, back down to three, up to 3.5. And then over the last couple of, of weeks, it's gone down to 2.8 and up to 2.9 again. This means for every unit of electricity, we're getting about 2.8 units of heat. So for the month, the full month of November, our heating costs were just over 58 pounds. If you're using gas for that heat, it probably would have cost us about 40 pounds. But November's emissions from the heat pump were about 430 kilograms compared to about 1290 kilograms if it had been from gas. So again, the heat pump emitted about two thirds less. Overall, the whole six months of heat pump life has given us 3,544 kilowatt hours of heat at an efficiency of around three. That's cost us about 178 pounds with emissions of about 1,444 kilograms of CO2 about 66% lower emissions, but about 44 pounds more than if it had come from a gas boiler. I think we're pretty happy with this. We're in a warm house without burning any fossil fuels in our utility room. And we've emitted almost three tons less than if we'd used our, gas, our old gas boiler. That's pretty cool. I will try to do a monthly update so we can track the performance over the winter. December and January in Durham, I suspect will be a bit colder than November. And my guess is that the coefficient performance might go down a bit. Maybe it's 2.7, maybe it's 2.8, but we'll see. The data over the whole year will give us an in-use seasonal COP. The data from our installer suggests that that could be as high as 3.89, which is much higher than what I'm predicting and what I'm seeing at the moment. And though there are ways to improve the COP of a heat pump, run it at lower flow temperatures. So I'm gonna to continue to experiment a little bit with it over the next few months. I mentioned our EPC earlier, it gives us a rating of C. That predicts that we're gonna use 14 megawatt hours of heat for heating and hot water throughout the year. So far, we're on 3,500 kilowatt hours, so 3.5 megawatt hours, but we do have most of the heat season to go. We will see whether we need as much heat as the EPC estimated. I'm gonna keep playing, I'm gonna keep learning, and I'll try and give you an update as regularly as possible. The great thing is we will have a warm winter in the northeast of England using a heat pump in a house that's over 120 years old. It's all doable. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Do get in touch below if you've got any questions about our heat pump, how it works, or what we think of it. Um, I'd be happy to answer them. I do have a few more videos planned alongside heat pump updates. First of all, on maximizing the efficiency of your gas boiler. There'll be a video coming out about that. And then secondly, using a thermal imaging camera that I've got hold of. Watch this space.